We are activating your unique self-discovery one show at a time. The Orchard of Wisdom Self-Discovery Podcast at your fingertips. Just waiting to inspire and invite you in discovering just how awesome you really are and how to navigate through life in joy, enrichment, personal abundance, in mind, body, spirit, heart and soul. All the people we bring you are here to serve you on your journey of life. Do enjoy our next show. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Quantum Spirituality right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy. My guest today, an author and many other things, is Lauren Walker. We're going to be talking about her three books, Energy, uh, The Energy to Heal, um, The Energy Medicine Yoga uh, Prescription, and Energy Medicine Yoga. She's got all three books there. Energy to Heal is one we're going to dive into today, and Energy medicine yoga and she calls it the em yoga and why is it so effective how does it restore our emotional balance and draws the two powers everyone has energy and mind or spirit with knowledge and compassion she discusses why energy is not only the best medicine but also essential for my healing of stress and drama and she knows what stress and drama is about she's been there um, she has this wonderful system to help you feel you know come from overwhelmed or anxious as well as those struggling from intense traumatic uh, experiences. Um, the energy to heal, finding lasting freedom from stress, trauma, and through energy medicine yoga. It's new, brand new, coming out this month. She has uh, a crash course in her unique combination of energy work and yoga, uh, grounded in science and ancient healing practices. The EM yoga provides tools to help us in the face of anxiety. She helps us provide simple step-by-step practices and gentle tools that anyone can use and make EM yoga work for them. Whether in the midst of a crisis or on the brink of a meltdown or just grab Grappling with the stress of day to day, EM yoga can help you and anyone alleviate stress and reclaim your life. Isn't that what we want, everybody? We want to actually reclaim our lives and not have lives dictated by stress and anxiety and all the outside bombardment. Welcome to the show, love. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and to speak with all of you today. Stress and anxiety, um, we can't help avoid it. It's all around us. It's constantly in our faces. It's in our lives. A lot of it is because we don't know how to pace ourselves. We don't know how to be present, you know, in the moment. And uh, we, you know, as much as we know that we should pace ourselves and, and just not take on so much, we still do. And we don't know how to catch a breath. And uh, if we don't know how to catch a breath or just be still, which yoga does, right, it centers us. It has us still, has us going in, has us connecting. If we don't take the time to do that, then we're going to end up with that thing called dis-ease. And then the body is going to get ravaged as well as the mind. (sighs) We want to avoid that, don't we? (laughs) Absolutely. We want to avoid that 100%. And you really, I mean, you sort of covered all of the things going on. Our lives are so busy. We don't pause. And we don't really we're not really taught how to do that. We're not taught how to pause, how to turn inward, how to find that stillness while still being active in our lives. It's really, it's really crucial information. And the thing about it is it's so easy. I really wish that we all were given these tools to use when we were young and in school Mm. and, you know, overwhelmed. I mean, so many school aged kids today and young adults are so overwhelmed by just their lives and then what's going on in the worlds around them. We need these tools so incredibly much right now. And not wait until we get to adult years. And there's a wonderful woman I've interviewed many times, Duati Bastido out of England. Not only has she created a whole meditation, music and everything else for children, but also yoga, teaching them right when they're young. You know, we, we seem to kind of drag our kids through their lives, uh, education, sports, this, that, etc. But we don't teach them how to manage their lives as they as they are navigating through life. And then suddenly at 18, well, you're on your own now. (laughs) Oh, that's very true. We do. And you know, it's interesting. There's so many programs for kids everywhere about, like you said, art and sports and all of this nature. Um, But you're right, there's not so many about or 
I don't want to say not any because there are some. There's starting to be more and more, but there are not many about how to manage your emotions, mm -hmm. how to manage your levels of stress, how to be present, how to meditate, how to do yoga. We actually have a course available on our website called Tools for Teens mm -hmm. that I created just for that reason. I saw I was with my cousins and I saw a young cousin just absolutely having a meltdown. And I thought he needs some tools. So I went home and I created this class for, for teens. And we donate all of the money from that program to a local nonprofit here that works to prevent um, teenage suicide. Oh, good, really important good. work to be doing right now because, um, because young people are just overwhelmed. Yeah. Everybody is overwhelmed yeah. right now. Everyone is overwhelmed. But they're not equipped with the tools. And you know, you put those two words to gay, uh, together, teenage suicide. It, they should never go together, never, ever go together. Yet we see more and more and more. And, you know, a lot of it is is the social medias, you know, um, under the microscope. I mean, my day when we came up, we didn't have any of that, but we still went through all the bullying, We, you know, the mean girls, all of that type of thing. And one was just told to suck it up. But today it's on camera, it's on social media, it's being spread around like wildfire. And it's really hard for someone to step it up uh, when you've got that oppression in your face all the time for being different or just because somebody wants to pick on you. If we don't help our children navigate through that, those two words, teen suicide, we're going to see a lot more and I don't want to see that. No, I agree. It's, it is, it, it's, it's a horrible problem and it is growing. And we do, you know, I've all of the studying that I was doing um, in preparation for writing this book and all of the research, you know, there's been all, for years studies about um, the youth and what we need to do to help them. And none of that has been implemented. And it's like, we keep, we keep missing the opportunity again and again to help those of us that are in need and we're at the crisis point now mm -hmm. and again it's not just youth it's not just young adults it's now everyone i mean we're coming off of a two and a half year pandemic i mean i don't need to list the issues going on in the world today because they're devastating yes it's devastating yeah. and we don't need more devastation we need to uh, take the temperature down and uh, bring our own groundedness and centeredness so that we can start to uh, work with and help resolve the issues facing the world today but starting with facing the issues in our lives personally yeah. because if you're in trouble and struggling you can't do anything effective in in your work or in the world uh, you've got to just kind of maintain and we really need everyone we need all hands yes, on deck yeah. right now yeah a hundred million percent we do absolutely we you know it's um so many people i'm just one person how can i make a difference and my answer is this make a difference in your own life that will have a ripple effect on everybody else's life and if we could just do that own ourselves own our own beautiful energy come into oneness with our own meaningful purpose and which means that we have to be willing to go through the process of recovery you know we have in that quantum energy, we have a lot of static going on. It's in a turmoil and the energy is is being used in the wrong way and it's wearing us out. And we need to kind of take that energy and hone it in and and hold it in in, in, a, in a sense so that it can stream out, you know, more equilibriumly. And if we could just take that responsibility you know you talked about talk 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 i call that activism we're going to talk about it but i want to see actionism where we do something about it but it does start with us doing for us what we wish that we could do for others do it for yourself first no you really i mean you you kind of got to the absolute nub of this work mm -hmm. there's a tenet in yoga uh heal yourself heal the world yeah. And for yeah. years, I didn't understand what that meant to me. I thought, well, that's really selfish. I mean, I'm just going to go off and do my own healing work. And but there's so much that needs to be done in the world. Mm. How does my healing affect anyone else? And you brought up some really valuable points that you talked about quantum energy. Um, and a lot of people are like, what is quantum energy? Mm. I don't really understand what that is. The truth is, everything is energy. Absolutely. We are in a soup of energy. We are all just vibrating mm -hmm. bits of energy and information and all of us together in the same field of energy. And so when you talked about the ripple effect, that is actually a real thing. Yes. And yes. how I, how I help people understand that is 
think of an orchestra. <laughs> We're all in the orchestra and each of us is our own individual instrument. Now, if I'm the first violin and I am out of tune, I'm going to ruin the sonata yes. for, this, for everyone, everyone on stage, everyone listening. I yeah. will ruin it because I am out of tune. And the flip side of that is when we are all in tune, we are all in harmony. We are a symphony. And that energy, that harmonic energy actually has a tangible effect on yourself physically because you are only energy. And so when you are in harmony and your energy is in harmony, that is health. And it has an effect on everyone around you. So you start to heal yourself. You come into harmony. You come into coherence. That changes mm. how you show up in your family. The, the fighting diminishes, the strife, the anxiety, the stress levels come down. When you go to work, you are that calming force at work. And that starts to ripple out. And then you understand how healing yourself can heal the world. And if each of us took that personal responsibility to mitigate our stress, to release our stress, to really finally come through our traumas, to let go of that stuck energy that is the hallmark of trauma, yes, then we come into harmony. And we want harmony. It's so devastating to live in this disharmonious world. Yeah, this this discontent. You know, I'm laughing because uh, you, the analogy you use, I use virtually in every show. Is, is that we are in discovery of our own instrument. We learn how to play it to the best of our ability and we find our orchestra uh, to join. And then we learn to play. We bring the best of ourselves to that orchestra and in harmony, we create that symphony that resonates out. But, and not every orchestra is for you, right? You have to find that orchestra where there is the succinctness of energy, but you owe it to everyone else as you do to yourself to be that harmony, that beautiful harmonious instrument. Because whether you play solely or whether you play collectively, you are going to have an impact negatively or positively. And you know how the negative ripples out and how it seems to be even louder, right? Because it makes a great deal of noise. But when you step into harmony and peace, it has a soft tone of warm embracement. But again, what are you going to feed? What are you going to choose? And that is solely up to you of which instrument you are meant to be. Absolutely. And I love that you said about choosing the orchestra that you're in, mm. because that also speaks to this phenomenon of field theory, that we are in different fields and we have fields of energy mm -hmm. that run and operate and uh, are responsible for our bodies, our minds, our spirits, our health. Mm -hmm. And we also resonate with other fields. Your family is a field. Mm. The, the, your office or where you work is a field. Where you go and play and recreate is a field. The studying that you do is, an, is a field. And so choosing those fields that you are going to participate in is a way also of increasing your own resonance. Yeah. You are going to, you know, if you are a tennis player, you're not going to be as comfortable on a basketball court, right? right? So <laughs> you want to find the place where you really can shine. Yeah. And you talked about sort of, um, are you bringing that, that negative energy is so much louder. Mm -hmm. But I also want to say this, in a completely darkened room, one candle mm -hmm. light it up. Yes. One candle. And so your spark really does matter. Yeah. You really do make a difference. Every bit of showing up that you do makes a difference. It is important. And I know it can feel overwhelming, especially in in today's world where the, the, the difficulties and the challenges and the negative news that's coming constantly at us feels overwhelming. But I often say, um, like you have said this as well, you're so wise, this, <laughs> that which lane are you gonna focus yeah. your energy in? Yeah. Um, I always guide people to go to the Good News Network. Mm -hmm. You know, you scroll through your news and you see the devastation, but then there's just as much light and goodness and, and incredible, powerful people making real positive changes in the world, and you can be one of them. And when you start to look through that, you mm. you you get inspired and enlightened. Yes. You have more light, and that's what we're looking for. So yes, we need to acknowledge what's going on. We need to um, to stop the injustice. We need mm. to um, to really fight for to stand up and fight for what is good and true and honest and real and helpful and compassionate and loving. 
And we need to also bring our focus and attention to those things so that we can make those things bigger and brighter and have the light overcome the darkness, just like that one candle. Yeah. We are the light we seek, right? We are. Um, and, you know, the Good News Network, you know, for me, um, I'm, I, I have fibromyalgia and depression could be a, a side of that. And when I can feel that little rabbit hole going on, it's headphones on listening to music. And one thing I've learned about music, it literally changes the frequency inside your body, in your mind. It just equilibriums. And it's not necessarily the words or that beat or this beat. It's just the frequency you need. You, you, you go for it. And you can just feel it afterwards. It's rebalancing you. And you kind of, the energies are beginning to flow again in the right way. And that, you know, overwhelming feeling of depression or anxiety is not consuming you. We need to find, you know, in our lives, what is that thing that resets us, that rebalances us? And good news, that's another thing I do, is I go on YouTube or I go anywhere and look at all the wonderful rescues of animals or people, all the good things that people are doing. And I think one of the reasons why I have so much negativity is because people think that's all there is out there. And we, we don't give the same amount of attention or credence to the good. Why, you know, we, we go to the movies of fight and annihilate and all of that. We've got it all around us all the time. You know, I have a show on this week about the, the dancer and the devil and Stalin, Lenin, Putin, and their love of poison and just annihilating people who don't agree with them. And it's like, we're looking at a handful of people with so much power. How did they get that power? They got it because we gave it to them, because we abstained from empowering ourselves. We became the sheeple who followed, and then we don't like the leader. But you put the leader there. Yeah. Oh gosh, that's a, there's a lot to unpack in that. <laughs> what I want to come, what I want to come back to though is, you know, you you talked about um, tuning into music, the fibromyalgia and the depression, and and the things that you can do to mitigate that. And and I, I and I think that those are really powerful tools that you've talked about. And I want to add into that, if you want to heal, mm. if you want to overcome the dis-ease patterns in your body because they are patterns, they mm. are patterns of energy. And those patterns can be repatterned. That mm. is the root of my work. Those patterns can be repatterned. And so um, listening to music is a wonderful way to start to repattern. And you need to start to work with the physical body that gets you into the energy systems mm. that are underlying, uh, underlying the physical body. Mm. That is really where the healing will start to happen to to speak to the body in the language that the body speaks in which is energy because that is what you are and so when you have disease patterns that show up in the physical form they have first shown up in the energy underlying it mm. and if you can start to work with the underlying energy and bring that into coherence and that into harmony and that into working for you instead of against you holding these stuck patterns of emotion mm. of trauma of stress in the physical tissues that's when the healing begins and healing everything is possible. And I'm not just saying this because I want to sell books. I am mm. saying this because it is the truth of my experience and of the hundreds and thousands of students that I've taught and trained, as well as my teacher, Donna Eden. And I share her story all the time because it is one of the most magical stories. She was diagnosed with MS as well as a slew of other illnesses. When she was quite young, she was 28 years old. She had two children. The doctor said, you have to have, find someone to raise your kids because we can't do anything else for you. You are going to die is essentially what they said. Yeah. She said that was the best day of her life mm -hmm. because she realized, okay, Western medicine can't do anything for mm -hmm. me. I am going to do this for myself. Yes. She healed herself completely of her MS with these energy medicine techniques that I have now taken and woven into a yoga practice to make them even more accessible and more expansive in the physical body. Because one of the things that we need to create in the body is space yes. so that that energy can move. You think about, um, I always use the metaphor of a traffic jam. 
Mm. Right. So all this traffic is flowing and then something stops and then the traffic backs up and backs up and backs up. That's what pain is in your body. That's yes. what disease is in your body. That's Block what depression is in your body. Mm -hmm. It is. It is stuck energy. You can call mm. it chi. You can call it prana. There's so many words for it. It's the same thing. And you need to create space in your body to allow that energy to move so that you can heal you know everything has a rhythm everything has a flow you know if we stop the blood and the oxygen in our body from flowing you know hello we're not going to be here the energy in our body everything has to be in flow we look at the wind it needs to be in flow the the currents of the waters uh, the trees need to move with the breeze everything is about fluidity and when we have the block chi the blocked energy then we have disconnect dis-ease because there isn't the flow of that energy and that oxygen and that everything else that goes through that that keeps us alive and we we talk about things like stranglehold well that's kind of that block chi isn't it it's that stranglehold and not allowing that energy to move through it's also um like my fascial pain the fascia of our body you know, it, which is underneath the skin before the muscle. It's that white sinewy stuff. And it's from the brain that lets us move the fingers and do everything else. If that is damaged or blocked, that means that energy is not moving through. We think energy is just something we plug into a wall. No, folks, absolutely everything is particles of energy. And we and every living thing on this planet and the universe is reliant on that energy. Every single thing. And you talk about the fascia, that is one of the most electrical systems of the mm -hmm. body. It is how um, uh, uh, acupuncture works. Yes. It is how all, all, so much of energy medicine and energy medicine yoga works is through the fascia. Yeah. So it's really, uh, I mean, we are electric beings. We yes. are yes. electric beings. We have a polarity. We have energy that moving through us constantly. And you're absolutely right. We need to have that flow of energy. We need to have that flow of energy. We do. And I think it has to start off within our minds because, you know, we can't be all uptight and angry or whatever in our minds and expect to find the flow in our body. Uh, you know, that free will, you know, I'm willing to succumb to, or to surrender, to release. And if our mind doesn't kind of give permission, then the rest of us can't step into it because it becomes the resistance. And why are we resisting? Why is the mind resisting so much? Well, I actually want, I actually disagree with that. I don't think it needs to start in the mind because of what you just said. The mind is kind of a minefield and mm. most of the, where the problems start in our lives is in our mind. And yes, so, yes. um, you, I, I think you're better off and it's easier mm -hmm. to work with the physical body and the energy systems in the body and let the mind come in later. Cause the mind is the skeptic. No oh God, is it? Gonna, it doesn't believe that this is going to work. Or it works yeah. for everybody else, but it's not going to work for me because I'm special. I'm the one person that none of this works for, right? Yes. So there's the mind. And so if you spend your time trying to get your mind to come on board, yeah. that's what you're going to spend all your time doing. I say, let your mind be the skeptic. Let your mind believe it's not going to work for you because this is not a belief system. Right. So you, can, you know, let your mind have all of the negativity and all of the drama and all of the chit chat. That's fine. And get one of these books or jump on one of these classes and let your body open up to these practices. Let your body, let your energy systems open to these practices. And little by little, the mind is going to start to shift because the energy is shifting. Yes. And once the mind sees, oh, this is happening and this is happening and my relationships are better and I'm sleeping better and I'm digesting and I'm eliminating and I'm happier and I'm joyful. Whoa, I guess this really does work. And then the mind is on board. If you start with the mind, you mm. might just stop with the mind. True, true, very, very true. Because we can talk ourselves out of anything, can't we? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so therefore, what we're looking at is that energy has got nothing to do with the mind at all. Energy is just a source of energy that runs through every one of us. When we're made up of energy, energy is all around us. And if we have blocked energy, that's when we start having problems. But we can open up. I mean, I had somebody on the other day that, you know, uses energy as healing. And he was saying to me, 
your money chakras are all out of place. I'm going to realign it for you. And when he did, you know, like suddenly money started coming in. And we think, well, how can that happen? How can he do that? Again, it's energy. If the energy is not in alignment, how can it receive? Well, and your mind is also energy. Your brain, your thoughts, your th actually, that is one of the things that Western medicine does measure. It measures the, your brain waves with those little, you know, they put yeah, those little yeah. things all over your head to measure <laughs> the electrical component of your brain and your mind, what you're thinking. And they're all energy as well. But the conscious mind is a harder nut to crack in mm. terms of uh, bringing it on board to the understanding of, of what's happening. Because so much of what happens in this uh the, the in the energy medicine yoga practices is beyond belief really yes, yes. so it's really it's like the mind kind of just freezes and it's yeah. like I, I don't know how is this working and so i think that that is the, sort of the last piece that comes on but i do want to say this the unconscious mind which is about 90 percent of what runs you is the unconscious mind is incredibly powerful, incredibly yeah. powerful. And we look at things like the placebo effect, right? Yeah. Which can actually heal the body. What is healing the body? It is the mind, it yeah. is your belief systems. And when you can get those in alignment, then you are so much further along the path to having the life that you really wanna have. We're constantly looking externally externally for the answer externally for the cure externally for happiness and happiness joy your life everything is an inside out job and you know going back to what we said before you know be selfish look after yourself you know your health needs to be optimized your wellness your beingness needs to be optimized because then you can be of service to everyone else um but it it is that constant internal and where the energy lies and if we're not in fluidity then we're going to be in chaos and you know chaos has its purpose but really it's to find the clarity in the chaos isn't it well you know my understanding of chaos and chaos theory is that we are not looking at it in with a large enough lens mm. because when you pull back what appeared to be chaos mm -hmm. is actually a, a, a divine harmony Yes. that we just can't quite see yet. And so while things might appear chaotic, there is an underlying coherence to it, to, to everything that's going on. I mean, the world itself appears quite chaotic, and yet there is a rhythm, yes. there is, um, there is a, a movement, there is a continuity, there is a through line, even if we can't see that. And, you know, you said a while back, you talked about Stalin and Lenin and now Putin and where do, where does this evil really come from? And again, one of the theories that is underlying this newest book, The Energy to Heal, is that hurt people yes. hurt people. Yes. So when you see people that are in extreme positions of power and able to hurt a lot of people at once, it's not about excusing them. No, but no. in order to understand how to shift that dynamic, we have to see that these are people who are hurt and traumatized themselves. Now, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist, and it's actually outside of, uh, of scope of practice of any um, uh, clinical practitioner to give a diagnosis to somebody in the public eye. And yet, if you look around you and you see the people that are hurting you, mm. then you see that hurt people hurt people and it also goes back to yourself. If you've been hurt or traumatized, yes. have you hurt someone else, whether consciously mm -hmm. or unconsciously? Because these patterns are energetic patterns that come a through line. It's, you know, this um, generational trauma that is sort of such a buzzword these days. Yeah. How does it work? Well, there is a science behind it and you can look at the science behind it and we can understand that the traumas are passed on generation to generation. Yes. And if we don't make the choice to step up and break that chain, then we are actually contributing to the continuation of pain in the world. And so it's so important that we do our own work. And, you know, I, I don't like the word selfish because it seems like such a negative word. Mm -hmm. It is self 
care. It is yeah. self love. It is the most important thing that you can do. Even if you are a caretaker and you think, well, I must take care of my children, mm. the animals, the, you know, the work, I have to do all of that first and then I'll take a hot bath yeah. or then I'll take a <laughs> nap or then I'll take a rest. Actually, the opposite is true. When you're in an airplane and it is crashing down, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. say, put your oxygen mask over your face first before you put the oxygen mask on your own child sitting next to you. Because if you can't breathe, how are you going to support somebody else? Exactly. So we and must do that work. We must do the yeah. work of healing ourselves. It is actually the most selfless thing that you can do. Yeah. Again, you're tuning up your instrument to be part of the solution. It is the most important thing that you can do. And the more that we do it and the more that we step in it, and there is no quick fix. There is no going from, you know, first gear up to fifth gear. We've got to be willing to go through the process and, you know, allow and, and surrender and be a part of and um, attach to all of those things that we need to go through to get to that other side. But when we step up into that higher frequency of love, self-love, love of life, love of who we are and what we are here to contribute, love of community, that higher frequency and vibration, you can't knowingly do any harm to anyone because you know it will harm yourself. You're in a, a vibration of, of true essence. And that essence is to look out for one another, to guide one another down a path of, of possibilities, of creativity, of community, of collaboration. And the more we step into that, more we see the empowerment of that in that collectiveness. The more we as an individual step up into that, taking that path to be a part of that community, now the more we become the solution the world needs. Exactly. Absolutely. And, you know, there's so much separation right now and divisiveness in the world and um, kind of coming into one group and pitting group against group yeah. and, and all of that. In, in every direction and really any anything, any topic that you can think about, there's these groups that are fighting against each other. But when you really strip that away, when you mm. separate out of that, people at their core are good. And if you're walking down the street and you see someone trip and fall or something, you go and help them. You don't think, well, I wonder if they're the same religion that I am. Or, <laughs> Look, yes. they're a different gender than I yes. am or look they have a different skin color than I am. you don't really think that yeah. you, you see someone falling you run to help them are you okay oh let me mm -hmm. your books fell let me help you mm -hmm. and if we can just take that that awareness mm -hmm. of how we work as an individual and bring that into a larger perspective then we see that we are all in this together we're not different no. We really are the same, even though there are there is the appearance of difference, but that is really an illusion. That is an illusion. And the more we cling to that illusion, the more pain and suffering that we cause to ourselves primarily, because we cause our own separation. And separation is anathema to being human. Humans are collective collaborative people and the mm. more that we separate ourselves out and think that we're different and either elevate ourselves that we're better than or more mm. special or anything or we go the opposite way and say i'm not as good as i can't yeah. be this i'm not enough either way that separation causes deep pain and fissures in ourselves and in our world when you look around us and it's just horrific the, the evidence is there we can't deny it it is what's going on um you know, it doesn't matter what religion you are, whether you are a faith or just of energy faith, why do we gather amongst other people is to share the energy, to to um, elevate our energies. We, you know, people will come out of church, they'll come out of a concert, they'll come out of a gathering, feeling uplifted, you know, feeling, ah, oh, that was good, I feel good, right? And it's, but you can get that yourself. Yes, it can multiply. Those energies together are that orchestra we're talking about. They are that harmony. But we we don't always need to be a part of a crowd to create that harmony in ourselves. That amplifies it. But we should be, you know, be able to be that music unto ourselves and find that harmony. And we don't have to go to other humans to do it, we can also go into the universe to do it and just tap into the universal energy and just allow ourselves 
to come out of mind and allow the energy to take us into the stratosphere. And in that we discover there is so much more to life than just our physical existence. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, you know, I certainly teach a lot of group classes and I have courses and classes online where there are hundreds and hundreds of people. And I always encourage people to do a practice by themselves on their mat with yeah. their journal because that really is where the juice is yes once you, the generator <laughs> the generator yeah. and you know a lot of my practices and my work is about finding you mentioned the title of my second book the energy medicine yoga prescription mm. it's a prescription for you yeah specifically that you will cultivate after you see what are your issues that need to be worked on what are your emotional spiritual physical issues that need to be worked on every one of us is different and so we have different needs and we go to the classes, whether live or online for that collective energy that mm -hmm. you spoke about, the collective healing, which is so powerful and yeah, juicy. Yeah. And we need to also come back to ourselves, which yes. is where we find the wellspring of life within. What is it that I need specifically to keep furthering on my path? And then that path will bring me into community and back to solitude, into yes. community and back to solitude. And solitude is beautiful. It really is. I mean, a lot of people are running from it because they don't like who they are on the inside. Well, that's then the invitation, you know, to start doing the energy healing that you need to do so you can be at one with self. And when you can be in your own silence and your own presence and be very happy to be there, then you know that you are home. You have come home to self. And you know, when you go out and share that beautiful energy with other people, you know, that you really too can share your essence, your beautiful energy, and then you come back home to self. But so many people are running from self because again, they're living the outside life, looking for all of it outside instead of inside. Resistance is futile. We have to go in because that's the only way we're going to get our own generator working. I think, you know, a lot of people uh, resist uh, that solitude because of um, fear, mm -hmm. shame, guilt, anxiety, all of those things that maybe haven't been cleared out yet of the energy fields. And so when you sit alone, you're just sort of in the soup of who you are. And that can be a really scary and terrifying place, especially if you have a lot of stress in your life or you've gone through a lot of traumatic experiences and being alone and sort of steeping in those brings it all up again. And that is part of the healing journey is to, um, is to remove those toxic energies from your fields so that you do feel peaceful in your solitude. Yes. And that, that does feel like a place of refueling and regenerating and it's a calming and nurturing place. You are the only person who has been with you for your entire yes. life. With yes. Every experience, every yeah. high, every low, you are the only one that truly knows what it is like to be in your skin. And if you don't feel comfortable, at ease, mm. and then joyful and loving and lovable in your skin, that's giving you information that you need to do this work. Yeah. Because you are the only one that is going to be with you all the way through. And you can't, you can't outrun yourself, can you? <laughs> there is no escape. No. And the beautiful thing is falling in love with yeah. yourself. And yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's really, it's amazing to me how much we resist loving ourselves mm. and how difficult and challenging. I know so many people, students and teachers alike, who have been on the spiritual path for years and they still come back and they, I still don't love myself. Mm. How is that possible? And it's amazing. Yeah. How many people still feel that lack of love for themselves? It is, it is really important. It is the root yes. of healing. And it is a vibrant, beautiful thing when you come back into, okay, this is me. This is my body. This is my soul. This is my mind. How am I going to be in this, in this container that has my spirit for until I die? Yeah. What am I going to do with that? If you can come into a place of loving that with everything you are, all of the bad behaviors that you've done, all of the, you look in the mirror and you think, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. <laughs> if you can come back into love for that, yes. it changes 
everything. It changes everything. It's the most important thing that you can do. And honestly, I'm going to say this again. It is not as difficult as you might think. Mm. It really, truly isn't. I have a a one-year-old grandson. And, you know, the thing when you are a mother, you're so busy being the mother, you know, the, the management of everything, being a grandmother, it's more, um, more observing, more, more time to really take in. And my favorite moments is when he's busy playing with himself and you know, there's something going on in his mind and his little eyebrows are going this way. And I wonder what that conversation is in his head. And of course he is in pure love of self. And there's nothing selfish about it at all, but he's a pure love of self. And that love of self, my God, how it radiates out to us. It lifts our hearts up, it rips our hearts open and just devours, you know, it is a wonderful feeling. And why can't we feel that feeling for ourselves? You know, and this title, this show is under uh, quantum spirituality. And some people would go, well, quantum is science, spirituality is spirituality. They are one of the same. And one thing that uh, scientists are beginning to understand through the quantum physics is those that choose to live in a more spiritual state of being are living at a higher frequency, at a higher vibration. And they're really beginning to understand that is where the true essence of energy and life is. So the scientists are beginning to understand it's not clinical. It is essence of energy and we are that essence of energy. We know if we come together in the crowd, angry, hateful, look at how destructive we are. When we come together with love and caring and compassion, look how creative we are. You know, that the choice is ours. What are you going to feed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my favorite teachers of that very thing that you're talking about, that idea of of quantum science and spirituality is Nassim Haramein. I don't know if you're familiar with his work. He's absolutely brilliant. And he really uh, breaks things down in a very beautiful way for us to understand that we are not separate from the science that creates us. And that... Um, that this quantum physics, which can seem so odd and strange. And far out there, yes. <laughs> it really is how we operate yeah. and how we heal. The fractal nature of the yes. universe, the fractal nature of us as individuals, mm-hmm. the nature of mind, it's really, it's incredible. And science is starting to catch up mm-hmm. with these ancient 5,000 year old practices that have told us that we are not separate from nature, that we are not separate from each other, that as above, so below is a scientific fact and a spiritual fact at the same time. And that understanding, I think, really does help us to feel that that connection. You talked about your grandson and what what it is that he has at that Mm. young age is there is no disconnect no everything is one thing yes he has not experienced separation yet even though he's already experienced the separation of his physical body from the body that he was carried into this world in but he hasn't brought that into the mental construct and it is just a mental construct this idea of separation and difference and so to understand that if you're a science geek like me to understand that from that scientific perspective is really empowering because you you know so much of the spiritual world can be written off as Mm. that's woo or that you know all of that and the truth of the matter is science is actually starting to catch up Mm -hmm. starting to catch up with the practices with the understanding that we are only overlapping fields of energy Mm -hmm. with the techniques that have been used for thousands of years to bring us to this present moment we would not be here today without energy medicine because we have healed ourselves from when we were back in the caves to evolve to who we are today through that work of healing ourselves this is ancient 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 birthright techniques and science is starting to finally understand and what science can do is unpack the mechanism for how things work, but it's not creating anything new. It's It's measuring it. It's defining it, but uh, they're now beginning to understand it, you know, because it's rather like faith. You know, people will pray to a God they have not seen or haven't spoken to. That is uh, an essence of belief. And you feel you pray. And we actually do know that the, 
the energy of prayer when people come together in a prayer is a higher frequency that can be extremely healing whether you are praying to a god or praying for that person's soul whatever the practice is it is actually giving of energy sharing of energy and it can be incredibly healing and you know i i want to say um that I, I don't believe so much that it's about the higher frequencies. I think that gets a little bit um, over uh, overused and over important eyes. That's not a word. I just made one up though. <laughs> it's not really about raising your vibration. It's about coming into coherence. Mm. The lower vibrations are just as important. Those, those deep bass notes, if you want to think yes. about it in terms of harmony, but we think about it in the body. Um, we think, you know, if, if you want to talk about the chakra system, right, and the root chakra um, being the lower vibration is what it's always been known as, right? And really, the truth is that that idea that these lower chakras or these lower vibrations are less spiritual or less mm -hmm. important than these so-called higher vibrations, that we want to get into the, the crown chakra, which is about our connection to the divine, or the third eye chakra, our connection to our own intuition. But the root chakra is our connection to the earth and our connection to our physical mm -hmm. bodies, our connection to regeneration. It is how we regenerate physically, uh, birthing children. And so, and the, the second chakra about our sexuality and our sensuality and our mm -hmm. creativity, these are just as important as our connection to the divine. And truly, we are holistic beings and in health when all of these chakras are in I alignment. Agree. Yes. And the energy is moving up and it's moving down in this toroidal pattern that is how everything in the universe is encapsulated with this toroidal pattern that moves through us in both directions. And so I don't think it's about raising the vibration. I think it's about bringing our vibration into harmony and mm. raising our, our capacity for energy. So our ability to have more energy and more charge is important. But what that actual vibration is, we need all of the vibrations. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Because we're going back to the symphony. You know, when everything is in symphony, that is creating a frequency and a vibration that is all encompassing. And that each, you know, each organ, each part, each participant has a frequency. Um, I think, I suppose I call about it in, in, um, for me, the way I look at frequency is elevating the, the true heart, soul and spirit, whether it is from the grounding, whether it is from the top, but it is the essence of wholeness and, and of coming together, as opposed to um, a frequency that is of a very low, low, low vibration, lower than the birth and the conception, but it becomes more thunderous and becomes more um, repressive. Mm. Right. And we see those kind of frequencies that are extremely repressive, but people literally do feel that something is pushing them down. And it's that and it's very hard when I've been through that myself, where it was how do I how do I break through? You know, you look at a, a field that is completely dead and one flower has come up. And you know, you've got to believe we are that flower that we can come out of this dead field. But when you're feeling really repressed down in that lower, lower energy, that lower frequency it's very hard for us to believe we can come up and that's where we need to open up those energies and allow because the energy wants to be released it, it needs to be released it's it's waiting for you just to activate so it can release so how do we release that energy if we are in that state of being you do energy medicine practices you do energy medicine yoga practices you wake that energy up, you speak to that energy directly. And it is not esoteric. It is not yeah. talking. It is right. actually putting your hands on your physical body. There's a set of points right here that you tap mm. and thump. You wake your energy up right yeah. there. That right. is how you do it. And there are so many practices like that that will jumpstart you. There are yeah. tools right there this is your birthright and they're mm. available and they're not hidden and secretive anymore right they're right out there and they're there for you to use they're so easy you will start to use them every day and you will feel these shifts and changes in every area of your life so it's right there to be used it's not you know we've been talking a lot of really beautiful language but that doesn't always 
translate. <laughs> that doesn't always translate. That's yeah. right. That doesn't always translate. We need to actually do things. And those things are easy to do. They're really accessible and, and joyful and fun. You can do them with your kids, with your family, yeah. with your coworkers. I teach this in offices all the time. There's really beautiful things that you can do. Very simple to shift your energy. A lot of people, when they think yoga, think, you know, in a pretzel on the ground and I would need a crane to help me back up. You know, I'm just not physically that kind of person. Um, but, the, uh, you know, you were tapping. I love tapping, you know, especially in the shower because I love the water conduit and tapping together because, you know, it, it's just that extra boost of energy that's there. Um, if we can't do one thing, it doesn't mean you can't do everything we look for the things that we can do and that opens up our energies and allows us to do more as we participate mm, absolutely and you know this work i always teach variations so there's things you can do standing mm -hmm. you can do the whole practice in a chair you can do it lying down you can visualize it if there's yes. parts of your body that you can't move you can visualize the energy flows that i'm going to share with you and teach you and you can do them that way and you will have tremendous results just with the visualization of, of energy moving in, in very specific ways. And so I will let you in on a secret. I am the most inflexible <laughs> yoga teacher that you will ever meet. So when people say to me, I can't do yoga, I'm not flexible. I'm like, I am less flexible than you. I will bet dollars to donuts on it. And you can. It's not about doing a one arm flying side curl or doing the splits or doing handstands and it's not about that mm -hmm. those are beautiful practices that have a place and and sometimes i do them and sometimes i teach them and sometimes i share them but that is not at all the essence right. of energy medicine yoga it really is about waking up the energy systems in the body and getting them to work coherently for you and that um, we do want to move the body absolutely because mm -hmm. that is like i said earlier about creating space but you can create space. I mean, just doing that, stretching yep. your arms up overhead, that Ooh, creates space. Yep. That is yoga right there. You're right. Anything that you do that starts to move the body. And I will guide you through these practices. They're really, really accessible. I mean, I have, I have students from five. I have uh, one of my master teachers is 85. Mm. All, all gamuts, all the way through every body type, every physicality, everything that you can imagine, you can do energy medicine yoga. You know, and you talk about the simplicity of the moments, you know, like Qigong and Tai Chi, you know, they're really because they're about the slow movement, the deliberate movement. And one thing we don't realize of how we think it's only for athletes and dancers, it's just the simple stretching, just simply stretching, because in doing that, you're allowing that energy that may have got a bit of trap somewhere to flow and expand. But you also talked very much about, and this is um, as a very sickly child and bed bound a great deal. Um, of the power of going into our psyche and you can do anything in those other dimensions if you can't do it in this particular body and dimension you can do anything and it and it literally to your psyche you are doing it oh absolutely i mean there have been studies that if you are visualizing weightlifting you are you actually build muscle mass yes if you visualize yourself playing the piano you increase your piano playing skills right so this is real i mean all of this is real and yep. so much has been scientifically validated again if you're one of those people that needs that science which yeah. again i love it i love the science yeah. because yes. when i talk to the skeptics they say oh woo woo doesn't yeah. work you're waving your hands around i say well i might be waving my hands around but here's a scientific paper that shows you why my waving my hands around actually works so if you're one of those people that needs that I get it. I'm with you. There is the science and you can shift and change your life no matter what it is, no matter where you are. One of my uh, yoga teachers, um, who's now a colleague of mine, uh, uh, was in a skiing accident and shattered C4 and 5, I believe, and became a quadriplegic. Mm. And through her work, and she does a lot of energy work, she has actually regained function that her doctor said would, would right. never regain, right? So these practices are, have real effects on your body, on your mind, on your spirit. They really work. Yeah, I, I have a friend who um, at the age of 10 had a, a water skiing accident that uh, shattered his legs and broke his back. And when he woke up in the hospital, they had put... Uh, 
plates and things into it and they were talking about doing an another operation and he shouted no i'll heal myself and they just fought a 10 year old having a tantrum but the parents honored that and uh, he did he's broken his back at least three times since then and he has healed himself every time he has parkinson's and he's healed himself from that it, now and again it kind of comes back but it, it um, he purely manipulates but he's into um he's into the quantumness of fractals as you talked about and all of that so he really is one that dives into the science but it's all about how to manipulate that energy that it it can feed the body and he would literally be lying there just moving his energy around he could turn the water the other way around this way around and people would be fascinated and he said we can all do it if we just learn how to actually channel in and do that but he literally has healed himself from from that that's amazing and it's so beautiful and and you're absolutely right we can all do it you can feel your energy mm -hmm. you can work with your energy it is not esoteric it right. is not woo woo no. it is really simple simple to do you know, again, we, we look at, we talk about energy fields and, you know, the energy of this and the energy of that. And it's like, well, why are you just putting that energy in there? We, we will talk about people with negative energy and positive energy. Is it the moment we can stop looking at energy as an external thing and an internal thing, as it being our generator? And that if the generator isn't being fueled, being fueled by that that energy that's then going to spark everything else into action, um, yeah, things are going to break down. You know, the 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 um, the my fat girl that's going to break down. The uh, everything in our system is going to break down because it's not getting the energy through, and the energy needs to go through us. And yeah, I agree that. Um, I, where I see where the mind comes into it is that the mind with the willingness to say, okay, I'm going to do this energy, mm -hmm. you know, because the mind, if it doesn't agree to do and explore this energy thing, we're not going to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. But, and I think that is sometimes I talk about the big leap. Everybody talks about big leaps. And I said, that big leap is that first step. And that first step is like, I don't understand this, but I'm going to read the book or I'm going to reach out to Lauren. I'm going to, participate in her programs and just explore we haven't we've lost that ability to explore to discover what is possible because we want proof we want proof show me you know the proof is in the action take the action it will prove it to you itself i love that you say that the biggest leap is the first step i could not agree with that more and you know one thing that i that i say to people who are maybe skeptical or not sure maybe this isn't going to work for me i don't have the time i hear that one all the time yes i don't have the time for this i'm so busy we're all so busy mm. the beautiful thing is when you start doing this work and you get your energy more organized then everything becomes easier and you get actually more space in your day Yes, I, I created energy medicine yoga. I was teaching at a uh, university and these students had crazy schedules. Like it's hard to even fathom their schedules and working on very little sleep. Mm. And they started to do these work, this work. And they all came back to me and they said, my days feel so much longer because mm. they were getting their homework done faster. Yeah. They were, they were excelling in everything they did. More that, efficiency, that life, right? More yeah. efficiency. Yeah. But what I say to people, do the the wake up practice this is a short you can do it in two minutes and again it's in all three of my books you can find it online there's all kinds of resources do the wake up practice commit to it every day and give yourself a time frame every day for three days or every day for a week or every day for a month and i guarantee you very quickly you will see shifts and that can be the kind of gateway drug, right? To really, uh, to diving deeper into these practices and giving yourself, again, that permission to heal. It's okay. It is time mm. to let your burdens down. It is okay to stop identifying as, as a person with stress or a person with mm. trauma or a person with this disease or that disease. It is okay to put that down and allow yourself to be the person who healed. Yes. You know, the, I think one of the very big things that we need to have is a gratitude attitude. And I think if we can wake up every day uh, 
and go, thank you. I'm here for another day. What can I do today? What can I achieve today? You know, when we can step into that gratefulness and when, when I um, had my own practice, I would have people write out everything that was miserable in their life, everything that was negative, and then everything they were grateful for. And you would always see the grateful tiny an inch and the rest of it is an entire yard. And they go, okay, which one do you want to feed? Because what you feed is what's going to grow. If this makes you feel so miserable and it's crippled you so much, and this is what you're grateful for, why are you not feeding the gratitude? Because that in itself is a positive energy. Absolutely. I was just talking about that very thing with my husband last night. I was talking about um, this is wrong in the house and I want more space. We're so cramped in. And he's like, well, could we build something over there? No, nah, it's not going to work. And, all. and, you know, I just had all of these things that I was dissatisfied with. Right. And he said, you know, I'm just grateful every morning when I wake up that I had a healthy day. And this was at dinner last night. So I'm grateful that I had a healthy day on this planet today. And I was like, are you shaming me for wanting a big <laughs> he said, not at all. I just, that's just what I feel. I'm just grateful. Mm -hmm. And it really, you know, obviously it stuck with me. I'm talking about it now. There's nothing wrong with striving and wanting yep. things in your life and wanting, you know, more or better or different or a, a, a different job, a, a, a career, love, house, car, whatever it is. There's nothing wrong with that yep. desire. But if underneath it all is this, what does the world owe me? Right. Or what is, everything is so wrong, but if this happens, I'll yeah. be happy. Then you're not being a springboard for actually creating the bounty mm. in your life that you want. And I, I teach a whole course on manifestation and the root of manifestation is gratitude. Yes. And in, in that soil, that soil of gratitude, then the abundance can grow. And so to be happy and find that gratitude, even in really challenging, I want to say actually, especially in challenging yeah. circumstances, in some of my darkest times, I would always reach out. You have to have a gratitude touchstone. Yeah. And for me, I wish he was here right now. He just went downstairs. Is my dog, Louie. Mm. He just went downstairs. But in my darkest days, I would just look at him and, oh, there's this beautiful fur baby right here yeah. who is just radiating love. I'm Pure so love. grateful mm. that he is in my life. Mm. And that was enough. Yes. That was enough to start to turn it around so that I could get through another day. So if you're really in a challenging place, to find that gratitude touchstone so that you can make it to the next place and the next place and the next place to find that healing that is really there waiting for you. Yeah. You know, it's okay to have a bitch fest. Get it off your chest. You know, it's part of the emotions that we go through and <laughs> let it all out. Thing is, don't get stuck in it. Right? release it it's a part of the you know the releasing okay oh, take a deep breath i've let that out now All right now what am i grateful for pooch come here give me a hug husband come here give me a hug and then feed the gratitude because if we don't the attitude of discontent has a way of getting in inside of us and clawing itself and uh, staying there it's okay to be angry to this and that spend the emotion without hurting yourself or anyone else let it release and then step into the other zone absolutely where you put your attention is yes. what grows so it's really important to um back to what you said about choosing what lane you want to be yeah. in you have to be aware of all the other lanes yes but then you choose which you choose your path you choose your path and it's okay sometimes to say you know what this is a me day this is this i love you but i have to have time for self today mm -hmm. entirely with me and oh yeah but we had this planned or that planned or you've got to do this it's okay to cancel yeah. it's okay to cancel you know, this is something in 10 years of doing this, it was be, you know, I'm having a bad fibro day about this day. And it's like, I push myself through it. Very, very rarely would I ever cancel or it have to be kind of at the death's door. And then it was like, okay. And now sometimes doing the shows literally energize me and it becomes my fuel, right? Uh, but the other times it would be, no, though I have 
to learn to, that my energy is low and it needs to be recharged. And if I need to go and take a nap or go walk by the beach or go and do something that's going to regenerate me and go in and look after me, I should never have to apologize for that. Never. Absolutely. Make yourself primary. Take care of yourself. Heal yourself. And then we'll all heal. Precisely. So the programming that you have, um, uh, what kind of entries are there? What kind of programs are you offering for what level of people? So the what is coming up right now, um, my uh, new book, The Energy to Heal, comes out May 8th and uh, June 8th, I believe, in Canada. And I am... Uh, I have created a whole seven week course to support the book. Mm -hmm. So it really brings you through and uh, teaches you uh, the path to healing and explains all of these practices in, in real wonderful detail. I'll have seven live Q and A's with everybody. And that begins the first Tuesday in June. And I believe you need to sign up for that by June 5th because that is a, we'll close that course because it is a live course. Mm. We also have many, many courses on our website, emyoga.net. You can find, we've got manifestation courses. We have a wonderful intro class. We have um, a, a course on creating your energetic health. We've got teacher trainings. If you teach yoga and you wanna learn how to teach energy medicine yoga, our next training begins um, in September. So no matter where you are, mm. um, you can study with us and our classes are really accessible so i'll always give you variations if you are have been practicing yoga and you're a master teacher or master practitioner you are going to get things out of this course mm. if you've never done yoga before you are going to get so much out of mm. these courses so it really it runs the spectrum because energy medicine is so new to so many people, yeah. even if you have a really strong and grounded yoga practice, you might be totally new to these energy practices. Mm -hmm. And one of the beautiful things I love about yoga is that cultivation of beginner's mind. Mm -hmm. And so if you've been studying for 20 years and you're like, hmm, ho hum, then you need to come back and cultivate beginner's mind and learn these practices through that lens. You know, I've had, teach, I've had students who have been practicing yoga for years, maybe even teaching, and they said, you know, I was so bored with my practice and really yeah. I was ready to stop teaching yoga. And then I found energy medicine yoga and I am re-inspired and reinvigorated. So just trust yourself that you will find the right course or the right class for you. And we always offer a money back guarantee. So mm. if you take the class and you're like, this isn't for me, we want you to be happy. And so we'll give you your money back and hope that you find a teacher that supports you in, a, in the way that you need to be supported. So there's really very little risk and the reward is. Yeah. And, and only when you get there, do you actually understand the magnitude of that reward? Now um, you've got the energy healing, but the other two books as well. I do. So I have um, the first book is Energy Medicine Yoga and um, that all of these books are available everywhere books are sold. And um, and then the Energy Medicine Yoga prescription, which takes. So in the first book, I, I share with you what the nine energy systems are in the body. And in the second book, Energy Medicine Yoga prescription, I take one of those systems and really unpack it because it's a huge system and it teaches you uh, how to create an individualized practice for specifically what you need, whether it's body, mind, or spirit, what tools that you can do. So by the end of that book, you'll have a really specific healing practice for yourself. And then the third book, The Energy to Heal, which is coming out right now, is all about healing trauma and stress. Mm. And so, gosh, I really can't think of a better time for that one. Too. Oh. <laughs> no, definitely not. So it's emyoga.net. Also, if they wanted to, they could go to energymedicineyoga.net as well. Yes, that's correct. Yep, and you can find everything there. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. 
Um, so you can find all kinds of things and we have got lots of free resources as well if you're sort of just curious and we've got all you know we run the gamut in in terms of the price point so you can dip your toe in very uh, very reasonably priced to sort of just see if this is for you and then go all the way up to doing our teacher training and then we have an advanced training program which is incredible um, if you get captivated which I know many of you will the thing about energy when it starts to flow you want to keep it flowing right. right you know it's like i'm not going back to block chi anywhere anytime soon i want to keep it in flow because it's not only the physical but the emotional but the spiritual energy it's the way you see things with such clarity it's the way you actually attract other energies and the way that inspiration begets invitation around others with your energy. So we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our communities. We owe it to society. We owe it to the collective world energy here. If we're looking for a solution to heal the world, heal thyself. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you'll be joining with a community of yeah. like-minded people. So yeah. you will enter a field of healing and manifestation and um, and growth and joy and be with people that are, are willing to support you as well and help lift you up. And we really do have this incredible supportive community and it's open to all of you. So I really hope that some of you jo join us or all of you, all of yes. you, come, 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 come. When we realize that we are the solution we seek, all we need is just the tools and know how to use them in order to activate ourselves. And then we realize, you know, we say, you want peace, it lies within. You want gratitude, joy, love, and everything. It lies within. When you activate it, you become the peace. You become the love. You become the solution that we all seek. So you owe it to yourself, but you owe it to all of us as well. Thank you so much for sharing here today, Lauren. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Oh, with you too. Absolutely. We're all energy, folks. It's how we use it to generate our own energy, how we share it out with others, how we perceive and receive the world. It all lies within us. And when we're, when we're willing to activate it and truly let it be free, harnessing our own wind, my goodness, what a wonderful gale we can produce out to everyone. So until next time, folks, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. Find all of our shows on selfdiscoverymedia.com under podcasts or selfdiscoverymedia slash shows. And for all our current shows, go to What's New. We are supported by you, the audience. You will see a nice big shiny blue button for one-time donations or follow us on Patreon and you will be able to support us there. We enjoy bringing you such wisdom. And the next show will be up in just a moment.